stand for the um, Pledge of Allegiance? Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, up next we have roll call. Okay, Ms. Holly. All counselors present with Counselor Hensley re previously requesting to be excused and Counselor Daniel on the Zoom video recording. Okay, thank you. Mayor, I move that we approve the I'm, I jumped ahead, Mayor, I'm sorry. Okay, it's okay, no worries. Um, up next, we have the agenda approval. Mayor, I move that we approve the agenda as presented, uh, excusing Ms. Hensley from the meeting and uh, allowing Ms. Daniel to zoom in on the meeting. Okay. I second that. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Okay, if not, please start voting. Okay, so we're having some feedback on this um, mic up here, Holly. Do y'all need to move this over or anything? Okay. Up next on the agenda, we have uh, citizen comments. This is the part of the agenda where we allow uh, citizens to come up and um, voice any concerns or any comments that you have. We ask that you keep your comments to within three minutes. Um, at this time, I don't see any comment cards. Have anyone turned in? No? No, sir. Okay. So we'll go ahead and um, skip down to the consent calendar A. I'll make a motion that we, if there's no questions, I'll make a motion that we uh, accept consent calendar A as presented. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Okay, if not. Please start voting. Ms. Holly? The motion carried unanimously. Okay, thank you. Up next, under regular business, um, we have our board, um, advisory board appointments under um, item one. Ms. Holly? Okay, so this is your annual um, appointments to the advisory boards. So we sent out notices back in April in the mail bill and they had a end date to submit those requests to serve on the boards. And we only had um, one new applicant for the planning commission, Kendra Lambert. And then we had one person request reappointment, which is John Brunel for the recreation advisory board. Um, Kendra Lambert sits on the personnel board already, so you guys decided not to do an interview for her and just appoint. Um, so tonight you need to do your appointment for the Planning Commission to appoint Kendra Lambert to it and your appointment to reappoint John Bernal to the Recreation Advisory Board. Okay. Uh, can we, uh, question Mayor? Can we just go ahead and make it one motion and, and make both of those appointments, Counselor? Yes. I'll go ahead, uh, if there's no other questions, and make that a motion that we appoint both those individuals to those uh, different boards. I'll second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? If not, start voting, please. Thank you. Ms. Holly? The motion carried unanimously. Okay, Council Vigil. Mayor, just a point of order, I'll be voting for uh, Christina Daniel tonight. She's okay. texting me what she wants. Okay, sounds good, yep. thank you, all right. Okay, the next item is the uh, Homeless Coalition Appointments. 
Okay. Um, for this one, the before we start this one, Councillor Hensley has sent in her votes for this, mm -hmm. and you guys need to determine if you guys are going to allow her votes to count for it or not. We did have that discussion, and if it's okay with Eric and he doesn't see anything wrong with it, we wanted to allow her the opportunity to have her votes counted because she did participate. Okay, sounds good. It's fine with me, and I don't know who you mean by we, Mayor. It, it, so I actually I would re request that the minutes would reflect that there's a motion by council to have that happen. Okay. Okay, council. Mayor, I move that we uh, approve the uh, the votes for the homeless coalition submitted by Ms. Hensley prior to the meeting in an email, Holly, uh, to count towards the vote total. I'll second that. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Okay. If not, please start voting. The motion carried unanimously. Okay, thank you. Okay, and now I'll read the background. Um, the Homeless Coalition is a standing advisory committee created for the purpose of discussion and identification of causes, effects, and potential solutions to homelessness in Alamosa and to assist in development of strategic partnerships, collaborative responses, and engagement of community resources to address homelessness. Um, Council shall appoint members to the committee consisting of the following. Com County Commissioner, City Council Member, Alamosa Police Chief or Appointee, Alamosa County Sheriff or Appointee, a Health System Representative, Mental Health Representative, Professional Substance Abuse Representative, La Puente Representative, Community Representative, At-Large Representative, Faith Community Representative, a Business Community Representative, the Alamosa Director of Human Services or Appointee, homeless or near homeless representative, a youth representative, and a veteran representative. Council interviewed applicants interested in serving as a representative of the following on May 22nd and May 29th for the health system, the mental health representative, the professional substance use, community at large, faith community, business community, homeless or near homeless, youth representative, and veteran representative. Council will appoint board members by way of a vote um, established by your resolution number 12, which allows you to vote by ballots. Um, when appointing for one vacancy with two candidates or more, the candidate receiving votes from a majority of the council present shall be appointed. In the event none of the above line receives a majority of the vote, then no candidate shall be appointed. If multiple candidates exist for a single vacancy, then the voting may occur in rounds. If after the initial vote, none of the council options shall have received a majority vote, then a second round shall occur. In the instances of multiple candidates, the top two vote getters from council options shall proceed to the next round. This shall continue until a candidate is selected or council directs staff to re-advertise the opening. Once all, all ballots have been counted, council will affirm, affirm those votes by a voice motion ratifying the selection done by ballot. Um, in the council communication, I listed everybody that came to their interview and which areas they requested to represent. And that is how your ballots will be done. Um, we'll start with, in order of how it's listed in your council communication, we'll start with the health system representative. Ho Holly, can you also address how Ms. Daniel is voting on this? Yes, she will be sending in her votes to me by email and then I will tally them with all your other votes. Does that need to be, be reflected with the motion too, Eric? No, I think that's fine. That's consistent with her remote participation, but um, Holly will keep those emails because we need to have a record of the ballot cast. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm gonna start with the health system representative, and you guys will vote on that one.
बन गया क्या ना था Okay, and I didn't say the names before, but on the health system representative, the two candidates are Kelly Gallegos and Debbie Tringham. So council, as um, we're telling, we thought we might do what we did at the last meeting and, and fill this space a little bit um, with some of the staff updates that we would normally do at the end of the meeting. Is that appropriate? Yes, that's appropriate. Thank you. Okay, um, Judy, if you wanted to come up. Okay, and while she's coming up, I'm gonna hand you the next ballot. Um, this one is for the mental health representative. You have a choice between Peggy Eakin and Lynette Moore. So Judy, we'll go ahead and wait until they're done voting. Okay. So what we were going to cover with Judy is um, we just want to do a reminder since this is our, our last meeting in June that beginning July 1st, we will be having the state do our sales tax collection. Judy, if you want to talk about kind of how that process is working. Um, the way that it's working is I've been working with a representative from the Department of Revenue and she's helped us set up all of the mechanics of how it's going to work. Um, I'll be sending out a letter at the end of this week, hopefully, to all the vendors and sales tax remitters and <clears throat> letting them know it well in advance that we will, when they do their August remittance for the tax they collect in July, they'll be able to do that online with the state like they do for the, they're already doing that, where they're already registered with the state because they have to pay the state and the county through the state of Colorado already. So it'll just be a matter of the state Department of Reven Revenue activating our column on their state reporting portal. So it'll make it a lot easier for the vendors because they won't have to do an additional return. It'll just be right there. It calculates it for them so there won't be any mathematical errors, which we do get those fairly frequently. Uh, so it'll make it just so much easier because they, they can just do everything online, file one, one return. Um, according to the ordinance, so they're still required to get a sales tax license, so we'll be t still taking care of that. But we're having, uh, we have that set up hopefully to go live online this coming week so they can go on, online to the City of Alamosa portal. They'll be able to apply for the license and pay for the license online, which right now they have to go online, fill it out by hand, send us a check, so it'll expedite things and make it easier for them to send us money, which I like that idea. So um, we've had a lot of out of area vendors contacting us in regards to the sales tax and the licensing, just because of the, it, the hard date was June 1st that they needed to start remitting sales tax for our area. So I'm, I really think it's gonna be a big, hopefully big increase to our sales tax revenue, but we'll know probably, it'll probably take a couple months, it'll be rough maybe August and September, but I think by the end of the year it should be going pretty smooth. So hopefully we'll see a little nice bump in the revenue there. Because we have some stuff we want to spend it on. <laughs> so do you have any questions? Anything? One question if I may, uh, what kind of feedback are we getting from the people with this change? 
you know, you know, positive or are it's they, been or <clears throat> most of them have been pretty this it is what it is it's the it's the law so that's what we're going to do so which has okay. been very nice i mean you have a few complainers but most of them just accept it they're already paying sales tax anyway sure. in some regard so it's just one more step i i'm really happy that it worked out that we were able to do the sales tax it worked out that it would be beneficial for us to have the state collect because that's been the hardest and the biggest complaint I've had from all of the vendors is that Colorado is the only state that has self-collecting uh, entities. So instead of doing one sales tax return, they have to do 70 for Colorado. So I'm really glad that Alamosa chose to be the leader in going to have the state collect because I from what I the background noise I hear is that the state would like everyone to do that just for this purpose to make it easier for vendors to pay so, thank you okay um, back to your ballots your next one you're going to be voting on is for the professional substance abuse representative um, you have an option between Lynette Moore or none of the above And your next um, thing you're voting on is the substance or the community representative. Your options are between Justin Armijo, Peggy Eakin, or none of the above. I think I know. So you guys have already, so your ballots that you've just completed for the health um, representative, you guys appointed Kelly Gagos. For mental health, you appointed Peggy Eakin. And for substance abuse, you appointed Lynette Moore. I will hand out the at large and your options are Savannah Schlafman, Vicki White, or none of the above.
I will be handing out the ballot for the faith community, listed as Robert, Robert Orendorf, Erin Young, Vicki White, or none of the above. While, while you have those just pending, um, I don't need to say anything. Oh, no, for the faith community, Vicki White has not yet been appointed, so but pursuant to your vote, so she would still be a candidate on that one. We'll see how these next ones go. There's some more options. So this next category is the homeless or near homeless representative with Justin Armeo, Ramona Smith, D. Wells, John Kettler, or none of the above. And, and Justin Armijo has already been appointed pursuant to your earlier ballots. I'll go ahead and pass out the youth representative ballot, and I'm gonna apologize up front on the pronunciation. I think it's Garlene Carr, Emily Wilson, and Kelly Jo Wilson, or none of the above.
The last ballot I have for you is the veteran representative. We have Don Garcia, Lynette Moore, and Ramona Smith, or none of the above. Was Ramona Smith selected? Yeah. Ramona Smith is still available to be appointed. Okay, you guys made it easy. You don't have to vote in rounds tonight. So here are, is who you appointed by your ballots. For the health representative, you, appoint, you have Kelly Gallegos. For the mental health representative, Peggy Eakin. For the substance abuse, Lynette Moore. For community representative, Justin Automijo. For the at-large representative, Savannah Schlafman. For the faith community representative, Robert Oringdolf. For the homeless, near homeless representative, D. Wells. For the youth representative, Emily Wilson. And for the veteran representative, Don Garcia. And you still need to fill the business representative, but we didn't have any applications for that. Thank you very much, Holly. Okay, and now we Thank need you. a motion for you guys to appoint all those people. Okay. Mayor, I'll go ahead and make that motion. Okay. We'll second that. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Okay, start voting. Ms. Holly? The motion carried unanimously. All right, good. Now that we got a taste of what 2020 is gonna be like, um, elections, <laughs> we can move forward a little bit. On the agenda, we have business brought forward by the city staff, Public Works. Thank you, Mayor. So the, this item of business is ordinance number 14-2019, which is to establish a temporary moratorium on applications for, for marijuana paraphernalia businesses. The uh, title reads, Fronting U.S. Highway 160 and 285. In your work session, you had given direction um, that you may also want to apply that to State Street. And the actual body of the ordinance, and this was my drafting error, was just a moratorium citywide because it's only a temporary moratorium. So what I have done is given your direction um, out of the work session, the, I, I have a, uh, made revisions to ordinance number 14-2019 
in the title to eliminate the reference to the particular streets and the temporary moratorium will apply citywide through August 31st. Similarly, arising out of your work session, I, we will have on your July 3rd meeting a first reading of an ordinance to establish um, appropriate setbacks from highways that you can then discuss. So I think you, are, you will be well situated to have a final ordinance in place before the moratorium expires. But again, this is just the second reading of, the, uh, of a moratorium citywide on marijuana paraphernalia businesses to give you time to establish what you want to do uh, in that permanent relationship. So um, with that, I think, Mayor, unless Council has any questions for me, you can go ahead and open the public hearing. One quick question for you, Eric. Can you just please remind us um, the direction we gave you on the drug paraphernalia? Yes, so the, the thinking on the drug paraphernalia uh, and actually sexually oriented businesses, because that came up as well during your work session, was to limit uh, drug paraphernalia to 100 feet, drug paraphernalia businesses to 100 feet off of all of the arterial highways, so 285, 160, and State Street. Um, I I but think, if I recall, I think we said we had we had that restriction on this on the sexually. adult on the adult uh, stores, but on the paraphernalia, it was three three. It was It was two two and two. So correct. Yeah. That's so right. it was not decided on on, and so there was going to be continued discussion yeah. at your July third on where you were landing on that. It was a two two and two. And actually, on the adult stores, uh, Councillor Hensley had thrown out limiting them, further limiting them only to industrial zones. So that'll also be up for discussion in in July. Okay. Thank you, Councillor Hill. Thank you, Eric. At this time, I would open up a public hearing for the second reading of, reading of ordinance number 14-2019. If we have anyone in the audience who would like to voice any comments or concerns, please come to the podium at this time. Okay. Seeing that uh, no one is coming to the podium at this time, I will go. Mayor, then I move that we approve ordinance number 14-2019. We're going to close it. Second. There you go. Good. Okay, any further discussion? All right, start voting. Okay, Ms. Ollie. The motion carried unanimously. Okay, thank you, thank you. Okay, up next we have the first reading of ordinance number 15-2019. Thank you, Mayor. This ordinance is a, another amendment to the Uniform Development Code, uh, and this, this one arose when CRHDC approached the city to work on uh, development of previously subdivided lots, and when those lots were previously subdivided, they were, that was done under the old land use code, uh, and CRHDC happens to have sort of uh, standard template houses that they put on their lots and it turns out while those fit under the old code, they don't fit under the new code because the new code increased the side setback from uh, I think it was seven to 10 feet. And the old code, that wasn't an issue because the zoning in which those lots happened to be located is residential medium and the new code doesn't make a distinction in terms of the the setback required between the different zones so the same side setback is required in residential medium and residential high as is required in the larger lot uh, residential estates or what uh, what used to be residential estates now they're called suburban lots under the new UDC and uh, Harry uh, went around with them a little bit and Harry and I discussed it and, and uh, really what this ordinance does is provides uh, a recognition 
that setbacks can be different in different zones. In other words, in residential medium, residential high, where you've got more closely packed development than you do in suburban lots, it makes sense that you might reduce the site setbacks from what, they, what, from what would be required in the larger uh, suburban lot size. So that's what this uh, does. It reduces that side setback um, from 10 feet down to seven feet for residential medium and residential high, keeps it at 10 feet for the larger suburban lots. Um, also, uh, we adjusted the setbacks on secondary buildings, ancillary buildings, from the UDC's current three foot setback requirement to a five foot setback requirement for better, better fire code access uh, primarily, um, and also aesthetic concerns. So that, that was kind of the driving force. Also, as we were reading this provision of the UDC and trying to understand uh, how to apply it, it became clear to Harry and me that we didn't exactly understand the process for determining what kind of lot you had and, and what particular housing palette applied to your lot. And so this ordinance adds language to the uh, palette definitions to clarify how that works. And we called up Todd Messenger, who was our consultant in, in helping develop the UDC, and he indicated, or he, he said, that th he had developed explanatory language for some of the other codes, and he sent us that explanatory language, and to me, it, it really does help in understanding how the housing palette works, so this ordinance adds that explanatory language for how the housing palette works. Uh, as well. And okay. in summary, I just want to make sure it was clear of when we, when the city attorney talks about taking it 10 feet down to seven, it was originally seven for these lots prior to the code change. So it, it, I just want to make sure that was very clear. Right. It was seven under the more dense zone. Okay. We're opening it to 10. We're, we're getting it back to seven. For the, for the higher density lots? It was seven. We did the new development code and didn't realize how it was gonna impact every area, so we knew that there might need to be some changes once we start applying this. So this is an area when they came to develop in the same area that they've been developing and had been using a seven foot side setback this whole time for their design. Now under the new code, it was gonna require a 10 foot, but the lots aren't different, the housing's not different, it's just the new code. And we felt for the residential medium type of density that the seven foot was appropriate. And just for clarification, Talking to the mic. Just, just for clarification, this is setback, this setback's between homes, right? The setback from the side lot, so yeah, it's, it's so that would make, that would when you look at it between homes, it's 14, 14 feet. Okay, Councilor Grego. Well, if there's no other questions, I'll go ahead and make the motion that we approve on first reading ordinance number 15-219, set it for a public hearing on July the 3rd at seven o'clock or soon thereafter. Okay, we have a motion. I'll second. Motion and a second, any further discussion? Please start voting. Ms. Holly? Uh, the motion carried five to one with Councilor Karsten casting the no vote. Okay, thank you. Um, up next on the agenda, we have under information technology, the second reading and the public hearing for ordinance number 13-2019. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, Council. Good evening. Um, tonight, as you just said, the second reading and public hearing on the IGA between uh, the City of Alamosa and Monta Vista, which will be our ordinance number 13, 2019. To recap quickly here for you, uh, we've been in an IGA agreement with Monta Vista for the past three years. Uh, we are proposing the exact same uh, IGA agreement with them with a slight increase in what Monta Vista pays the city of Alabosa. 
are will be going from fifty three thousand dollars a year to fifty nine or fifty eight thousand dollars a year. Okay, thank you, Councilor Vigil. Why the increase? If I may ask, uh, we have some uh, additional costs, uh, even a pay raises within our own department that weren't covered in the original IGA. Thank you. Okay. All right. At this time, we'll go ahead and uh, open up the public hearing then uh, for ordinance number 13 2019. If we have one, anyone in the audience that would like to make any comments, please come up to the podium. State your name and um, who you represent. Good evening. I'm Forrest Neuerberg, the city manager of Monta Vista. Um, I just thought I'd come down and uh, speak about this a little bit. Um, our, our city processes are a little simpler. Um, you know, in this regards, our city council has already reviewed this IGA and they voted to uh, approve it being enacted from the city of Monta Vista standpoint. So certainly we, ho we hope that you would do this. You know, the time machine of three years ago, um, you know, when this all started, the city of Monta Vista really lacked a long-term vision on how we would deal with IT. Um, you know, it all kind of started with an issue that we had and uh, really was a lack of consciousness of how important IT was to our city. And um, we were able to reach an agreement with you all and have professional IT support that was more than just you know, mechanics, but thought processes on how we get from A to B. Um, you know, we had, we didn't have a co cohesive plan or how we were going to get there. You know, um, we really were kind of lagging. And uh, this agreement has allowed us to actually get to a point where, you know, the one of the most important things is that our data and information is secure. And we kind of lacked that capability because I think we lacked the general understanding was not any fault of our previous vendor, but we just didn't have a philosophy as a city on how to deal with this. So it's been very beneficial to have uh, Mr. Belknap and your ID de IT department help us uh, really rethink how we're doing things. And it's been highly successful. I think it's been, a f been beneficial for you all as well because it supported an extra IT person. Um, so we're really pleased with the way this has gone and we hope that um, tonight you will uh, approve this and we can continue with this relationship thank you do, do we have anyone have any comments of uh forest thank you so very much thank and thank you. you for the great job you all are doing in Monta Vista as well okay do we have anyone else who would like to uh make any comments okay if not seeing uh no one else is coming up to the podium I will now close the public hearing um for ordinance number 13-2019. Mayor, if I can just add a little bit more too to, to what Forrest and, and Jim have shared. It's not just the additional IT position that, that's benefited the city. I think um, having that connection, that's a day-to-day -day connection between the two entities and, and as we try something new, they can, we're the test test buddies for that and if they try something new we can we can see how that works and so there's just a lot more information sharing that's occurring that I think is helping both entities just become stronger and so it's more than just an FTE I think there's the relationship overall has greatly improved um, from just communication and, and learning from each other Thank you very much, Heather. Councilor um, Griego. One comment, if I may, Mayor. Uh, what I like about the, this whole deal is that we're reaching out to other communities, and if we got the technology in whatever department, we're able to work with these other communities, and we should be working in this valley with each other, so that's, that's a positive thing. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor Griego. Councilor Vigil. Mayor, I move that we approve on second reading ordinance number 13-2019 a renewal of the IGA with the city of Monta Vista and their IT services second we have a motion and a second any further discussions okay if not please start voting okay. the motion carried unanimously thank you thank you council okay up next on the agenda um, under city manager legal um, we have Heather. Thank you, Mayor. Um, 
I think this is something that we think council is going to be very excited about. I know from a staff perspective, we're excited about this opportunity. Um, in 2018, we began our official relationship with Community Energy Solar when we held discussions for them to lease some city property just um, north of the cemetery and, and for them to look at building a, a solar facility there. Um, once those discussions ended and then the lease agreement has been signed, um, there was discussions about would the city be able to be a subscriber to um, a solar field? And at that point in time, for two reasons, the city did not feel, staff did not feel that we were in a position to be able to do that, both from a, a workload perspective and from a technical competency perspective of being able to conduct the process we thought needed to happen, evaluate those contracts, and, and really be able to carry our own weight in those discussions. And thankfully, Community Energy Solar did not give up on us, and they thought outside the box of how can we get staff past that hurdle um, and allowed for us to contract with Kyle James, um, who is a technical expert, and for him to handle that competitive process, to review the contract, to make sure from a staff perspective, um, which we didn't even know really what to look for, what questions to ask, what to make sure we're protecting the city's interest and, and those types of things. And so um, I wanna thank everyone for, for making this happen and, and getting up to this point. So from a staff perspective, we've worked with the interim public works director, myself, the city attorney, um, Kyle James, and then we also have Amy and Jonathan from Community Energy Solar. and. We had several, several discussions on the contract, and, and it, there was a few areas that were very important to the city, but it was a little bit different for how Community Solar has handled some of their other subscriptions. But thankfully, again, they did not give up on us, and they continued the discussions. And we feel the contract that we have before you tonight is something that obviously um, Community Energy Solar is very comfortable with, but it's something from a staff perspective we feel we can recommend full heartedly. Um, it is a 20 year term contract and um, we wanted to make sure that not knowing what's going to happen in the next 20 years that it doesn't get in a situation where the city's upside down and, and so we got creative um, but we were able to come up with language that, that is built into the contract. Now what you have attached to your agenda is actually four different contracts. You're only approving or potentially authorizing me to sign one tonight, but we wanted you to see that um, as Community Solar continues to build these projects, um, we can do the same type of contract and get a lot more of our electrical load onto this system. And I think that was something um, we felt would be in line with what council's goals are, is to become more green with where the city facilities are getting their resources. And I know this is a little bit different um, because it's just a motion so we don't have a public hearing, but I think there's some other benefits to us partnering with Community Energy Solar that I'd like to invite Jonathan and Amy if you guys wanna come up. You had sent me a few speaking points just about some of the community impact benefits um, and what this can mean. So, uh, yes, counselor? Right, and when you say uh, different contracts, are you talking about uh, possible future uh, different geographic locations for them around town? Yeah, so they, if you want to explain how the build out is, and but we wanted you to be able to see that we can take the same contract, but then put other city accounts into it, but there's a limit on how much one customer can be for each build site. And then Amy, if I'm explaining that wrong or it should be answered differently, you can jump in. Sure, and good evening, Mayor, Council Member, staff. Thank you for having us. Um, and Heather, just so you know, I think as of yesterday, we are comfortable with you authorizing to sign all four, because um, all those four projects are in motion as of today. Um, but whatever is appropriate um, tonight. But um, yeah, did you want to give me to give a little backstory on the community projects and those community benefits? Great. Um, so these are community solar projects. They're through Excel Energy. This is a, 
a uh, state mandated program that Excel is then uh, required to implement, um, which basically is adding more solar content to their grid offerings to all Excel Energy customers. So what that's allowing us to do was bid in projects that we've developed. Jonathan is our, our lead developer on these projects, including the one on city land. Um, and then to get the subscribers for these projects, which will receive bill credits on your electric bill, uh, give financial savings to the city, as well as create um, more renewable energy locally, uh, you know, which will be job benefits and, and you know, generally just solar in the community. Um, and an important piece of this project that is, is important to us is that 10% of each project is supposed to be allocated to low-income low families. And other developers have gone out and asked you know, those families to pay for those solar credits, similar to other subscribers. And what we've decided to do is actually donate those credits. So we've partnered with folks like La Puente and um, Energy Outreach Colorado across the state for all of our projects to donate those credits. And by the city signing on, you're allowing us to donate credits to, it should be between 100 and 200 families for these projects in the Valley, which we think is a, a huge impact. And um, these uh, we've developed two other projects in the Valley already in Conejos County and have had great feedback um, all around and are looking forward to uh, bringing more projects online. So we thank you. And thank you, Heather, Harry, Eric, um, for, your, for your work on this. Okay, Councilor Vigil. Yes, I have a, a question. I probably have a few questions. A question, if oh, I'm. Sure. Um, so how, how does this work? How does a, a family buy a, a piece of this solar field? Or how, how, does it, how does it work? Sure, so we have, again, La Puente Energy Outreach, Outreach Colorado working with these families to have them sign um, essentially a donation form. So instead of a, a, a subscription agreement, which you guys are seeing, it's a donation form. And they're signing that as well as the Excel Energy authorizing documentation. So they're doing that interaction. We're working with them directly. And essentially, they're going to sign this form. And then we allocate a percent of the project in dollar credits that goes to them every month on their Excel bill. What if you're not low income and you want to get a piece of this? Can you? Or is it just a city of Alamosa thing? Right. So these projects we have done uh, are two last projects. We had some residential um, subscriptions, but these projects we've kept uh, all commercial and municipal and school district. It's just for school district, municipal and? Right, okay. yeah, okay. We, we had these projects aligned to um, have those types of subscribers this time around, and then the low income residential customers. Okay, and um, all right, yeah, good, thank you. Sure. <laughs> Mayor, um, yes. Amy, while you're, while you're still up there, I'm trying to think how to phrase this so we can have the most organized <laughs> discussion. Um, so I guess I was under the understanding that it was only the one solar field that was ready to take the subscriptions. And so as you just shared mm -hmm. that, so are the other three, when you say they're already in the wor works, what, what does that mean? Like they're going to be coming online? Um, Within sure. A year so <laughs> I won't get into the, the full details of the solar development process because it okay. is uh, a long and wavy. Um, but those three, pro the, all four projects are far enough along in the development process that we feel comfortable that those projects will move forward. Um, obviously, with the, the project on City Land, I know Jonathan has a meeting tomorrow with Harry to discuss some of the details. Um, okay. But all, all best intentions, those four projects will move forward. We have other subscribers committed to the rest of those projects already. And so the reason I was asking that is, is if it felt like when you say those are moving forward, that probably within the next two years that they're going to be built um, versus is it potentially five, eight years? So I'm just so I know I don't, I'm not trying to nail you down on a year, but maybe more of a well, ballpark. It's this year. So this year. Oh, OK. <laughs> OK. Uh, Jonathan Moore, I've been in front of you guys once before regarding your city property. Yeah, I've, I've been trying to be respectful of not flip-flopping where the conversations go in terms of uh, which projects get built and when, but yeah, all, all our expectations are, and, and in fact our, our requirements are, these all have to come online by February, March of 2020. Okay. Originally it was this year, but we got some extensions through Excel. Okay, and, the, and so for a council's perspective, the reason I was asking that is if it was going to be five years, the only thing we would want you to consider um, is if you think in five years there might be a competitor and, and you'd want to have a competitive process, again, we did do a competitive process this time. There was only one bid. But if it's going to happen this quickly, then that may not be as much of a, an issue. Um, and, and so you, you may want to go ahead and authorize us to sign all four. And Amy. And yeah, and 
maybe a quick, make a quick comment to that. Um, so we do have documentation from Excel. It's actually publicly available on their site that says they do not plan to f further award any additional community solar projects in the Valley okay. um, for, for the time being. Okay. So we know of where the one solar field is going. Where are the other three going to go? So Can I ask that question? Uh, yeah, absolutely. And I, I probably might, probably can't even give you the specific address. Uh, but or I can tell you, and these, are, and these are based on awards that we've had through Excel. So I have one approved in Rio Grande County, fully approved, uh, and it's very close to the Monta Vista Middle School, you know, Home Lake, basically. That's the substation I'm connecting to. We have a project in Alamosa County, fully approved, south of, on 285 uh, near Road 12. Um, and, and the third one ideally will be city property, uh, but again, I didn't want to complicate matters, uh, but Coincidentally, I've asked Harry if I can meet with him tomorrow, assuming you know we get positive direction from you guys. Our, our hope and intent is to absolutely start moving on that right away in terms of coming in front of Planning Commission and eventually you guys for ratification of, of an, a, a conditional use for that property. And we hope we, are, we, hope we get there in terms of that. Uh, my last one is in Costilla County, and that one's probably the furthest down the road. I have a Planning Commission approval on it. Uh, and we're working through details with the board and stuff on that. But so ideally, we'd have a spread of projects across three counties. And Heather, is the city going to take advantage of this solar energy to use for our facilities? So, so I, I'm sorry, I, I wasn't clear. So, this is we took all of the city facility, the city organization, not the community, um, but the organization's utility bills for the different facilities, and um, looked at how do we spread these, what can get moved into these contracts. And so, of the four contracts, essentially, all of those accounts are split evenly, approximately, um, onto those four accounts. And um, the estimate that was provided to us that that would be approximately 90% of our organization's electrical load, so not the whole community, but our organization. We need to figure out we're, we're above that um, in that we know that we just purchased the solar field that's out by the rec center, and we have the other contract with the solar field that's um, by the wastewater treatment plant. So we haven't quantified that yet, but if all four of these are approved, that's approximately 90% of the electric load. See that, now that's awesome. I've got, I've, thank you, and thank you for, for getting, getting on that. <clears throat> it's, but since, I, since I've been elected on this council, I've always been, pu I've been pushing going green and, and saving our planet, and we're doing that, and I hope the rest of the council jumps on board with that. Just, just I, I, if I understood your question correctly, Councillor Vigil, there's a difference between the community solar um, model and what we've got going on right now out at the wastewater treatment plant and the rec center. Those actually tie our facilities into the solar field as a power source. This, the solar field is tied into Excel's power source. Our, our tie-ins are still through Excel. We get credit for the solar production, essentially buying that production um, that we then apply to our Excel bill. So uh, it is 90% it is, uh, of our usage or up to the, uh, getting to that anyway is supplied by solar, but not, not directly connected, just so that you're clear. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councillor um, Royals. Yeah, uh, just curious, on, the, on this pricing, on paragraph D, can you, can you go through that real quick and explain it? <coughs> like it has yeah. current so, subscription, six so, cents. Right. So the, the uh, what I was just talking about, actually, in response to Councillor Vigil's question, um, what this contract does is we buy, if you want to call it production credit, from Community Solar at uh, $0.06328, so 6.3 cents, and we get a credit for that same production on our Excel bill of 6.4 cents. So. What we are buying from Community Energy Solar at 2% less than we are getting a credit for 
on our Excel bill, such that our, our essentially our, our energy bill goes down by 2% because we're buying 2% cheaper than we're getting a credit for. So, so the contract, um, the city's not having to put in any of the funding for the capital construction. Um, and for a long-term perspective, we know that we will be 2%, we will be saving approximately 2% from whatever rate may happen with Excel Energy. Okay, thank you. Councilor Grego. Uh, before I make a motion, I wanna make a comment. Uh, I agree with uh, Councilor Vigil that we need to save our planet and past councils have looked at this, not only solar, but recycling and other programs that have put together to try to sell, uh, to try to save our planet. So I agree with you on that. And with that, I'll make a motion that we authorize the city manager to sign a community solar garden subscription agreement with Rock Creek Solar 2, CSG LLC. And you said to do all four of them? That's certainly council's prerogative. I will, I will make that motion to do all four of, the, four of them. I gladly second your motion. Thank you, Councilor Beho. We have a motion and a gladly second. Okay, any further discussion? Okay, please start voting. Okay, Ms. Holly. The motion carried unanimously. Okay, thank you. Thank you all so very much. Appreciate it, Amy and John. Thank, thank you, you for being leaders, we appreciate it. Oh, you're welcome. And then just from a housekeeping perspective, a lot of times we have people leave after their item, but if you wanna stay for the rest of the meeting, you're, you're welcome to do that as well. Okay, all right, so we're moving right along on this agenda, and we're down now to um, committee reports. Do we have any committee reports of, the, of council? Okay, seeing that we have no committee reports, we would now officially turn it over to Heather. For okay. I, we do. We do? Christina Daniel, Mayor, sorry. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Oh, I, was, I was texting slow, I apologize. I just wanted to say I attended the live um, this month they have some amazing programs going on for that summer and they're really hoping kids and families can get to the library i think it's going to be a really cool is it feedback yes and then the next thing was the rio grande farm park also if people want to volunteer they're really ramping up um, and getting ready to go. And so if people are interested in helping out with there, I know they can use some volunteers and they are really getting ready for the summer and they're gonna have some big fundraisers of this. Uh, and those were my two primary reports. Councillor Daniel, um, the first committee you were reporting on um, having a lot of activities, was that the library board you cut out at that point? Was it the it was, and I My phone is off still. So I thought that that fixed the issue, so I apologize. Um, but yes, the library board, um, they have a lot of activities really um, that are exciting this summer. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you, Councilor Daniel. Okay, no other committee reports. Now we will turn it over to Heather for staff announcement. <laughs> so we do have some more. Um, Harry, I guess if you wanna be the first one up. Council, Mr. Mayor. Uh, just a quick update on a few of the projects we have going on. Uh, the wastewater treatment plant, as you know, the HVAC system was failing and we were given direction last fall to go ahead and hire Mark Burgraff and Associates to design and replace uh, the system to accommodate the building's needs. Um, during the de design phase, we, we emphasized the importance of you know, efficiency, um, so we could also capitalize on some of the energy savings through the Excel program. Mark did a good job uh, designing the system. Um, we were able to hire Vision HVAC out of Pueblo. They started the demolition and the rebuild of the system in early May. They have currently replaced two of the they're actually rather large rooftop units and converting three high efficiency boilers, which we existent, existent, 
we had five boilers to start with that were just non-efficient. They were outdated and we replaced them with three high efficiency boilers. Um, <clears throat> the current status is they're flushing the system and hopefully by the end of the week we will start getting the controls and the wiring in place and within the next, probably the next month we'll have it online. Um, the first street project, we're getting going on that. That's been a, quite, the, quite the start with all the utility work. We've had all our utility companies out there um, replacing gas lines, CenturyLink's plate, replacing all their feeder lines. Uh, we also have the hospital and charter. Everybody's fighting for a little elbow room in the right-of-ways. Um, Gardner excavating, they're doing the heavy lifting for us as far as the actual rebuild of the road. They're replacing water lines, sanitation, and storm lines. So they got started uh, early this week by dewatering and will certainly work towards the end of the fall replacing and rebuilding the whole road. So we got a good start on that. Um, hopefully expected to be finished early fall. So um, also the ramp into the coal park, we got that installed last week. So the ingress, egress for low vehicles will hopefully be a lot easier. So. Okay, thank you very much, Harry. Yep. Appreciate it. And either Andy or Don. Looks like Andy. Mayor, Council, good evening. A uh, couple quick updates before I forget with the library board and the library itself. They set a record with 230 attendees today at summer reading. So that's just a little microcosm of the good things happening over there. I'll probably share more with you in the future. Um, an update on the golf course irrigation project. It is materially complete, um, a full month ahead of schedule. This bodes well for healing of the course, for tournaments, for revenue, for operations. Um, they're just, uh, the superintendent's learning the system. I would say there's already water savings going on by his ability to pinpoint watering one head, literally one sprinkler head at a time. So instead of needing to cover, cover an area with several heads or a big pumping manual sprinkler, he can literally from a, his phone or a tablet turn on one sprinkler head. Um, in terms of cost, we are around our budget number of $700,000. We're returning some materials. We're getting a few more materials called uh, turnover items that we will need in the next few months. So we don't have a final number yet, but we have some contingency uh, available or we planned for a little bit too, so I expect it to be right around budget. So that's, that's uh, good news there. A uh, Couple other quick things. The cemetery, we have a, an outdoor bathroom when we built our new building there and it wasn't really being utilized properly. So with IT's help, we added a computer controlled lock and now it'll be open early in the mornings and until dusk or so, so that people visiting there can actually use it as it is intended. Um, finally, uh, I am presenting at CML on Parks and Rec, so those of you who are gonna be up there, I'll look forward to seeing you there. Awesome. Any questions? Yes, Council Gray, go ahead. Uh, and one then one comment, Carson. Andy. Uh, the two uh, the biggest days out there in the cemetery, which was now Memorial Day, Sunday and Monday, those restrooms were locked. Yeah. You know, and and I was out there with with doing the flags and stuff, and I said, well, we'll we'll try to get somebody down here. That other restroom that that uh, the Port John. It was a mess, and I, you know, so. But I appreciate that you corrected that problem, and because uh, they they are nice facilities, and I think they should be able to get access to them. So, thank you, Andy. Yep, thank you. I apologize for that, Council Carson. Um, I just had one question. We we had talked in the past uh, with the chief too about uh, some of the vandalism that had occurred at some of those bathrooms. Um, I was just going to ask if it's possible to look at what it would cost or even if it's legal to put like a camera outside of those bathrooms outside to pinpoint maybe vandalism times or even mitigate it or even a fake camera. Is that so, possible? So <laughs> there's not going to let me talk. 
<laughs> I saw that. So but I'm just asking. We've gone around and around. We do have some bathrooms that have them. We played with. Do we just do ongoing recording? Do we do recording that's triggered by um, action? Are they on the outside? But that doesn't necessarily tell us on the inside. You put them up there for a weekend, and unless you're it, there's there's some gaps there so there's a lot that we're still working through on that on how to best utilize technology um, while trying to maintain privacy expectations and those things as well but Eric has been very straightforward that we can put cameras inside the bathroom as long as we're careful where they're looking oh, really? but that may not be what we necessarily want to do so we, we are looking at all our options and evaluating what works and does not work. Okay. Thank you. Councilor Brawls. Yeah, I was going to say, uh, good work on the sprinkling system out the golf course. Appreciate it. Uh, my concern is uh, I don't see them seating areas that, are, that need to be seated. Uh, have you talked to them about that? or? Yeah, in fact, I had some pointed questions about that, and I sometimes when you look at seeding is it just a time of the year thing like we don't want to seed in the middle of the summer or the spring and fall or typically with like a residential application the times to seed they actually said seeding will be ongoing now all the way through the fall so they have i know they have purchased some seed under their budget and our seeding um, he also acquired a seeder so you might not be seeing it, but I believe they're already initiated seating because certainly it needs it. Yeah. Okay. All right, and I just have one comment. Um, congratulations to you and your staff on a successful um, opening of the uh, roller uh, derby uh, area and roller rink. It was a great turnout of people showing up that night. Appreciate it. Well, thanks for your help. You're welcome. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Andy. Um, we do have Don, who's just going to do an update on the um, river. Mayor, Council, you probably noticed in the last couple of days the river's starting to come up a little bit. It's largely due to some of the warm weather over the past weekend. It's still below where it peaked about a week and a half ago. However, it's going to make its peak here in the next couple of weeks probably um, this weekend's weather forecast is going to be is pretty warm for the mountains and they're predicting some pretty high stream flows starting to come down now so probably the peak of the river flow this year is going to be somewhere around the 20th is what their somewhat estimate of estimates are but we'll continue to monitor it Right now, there's no issues. They did say today on a conference call, there's a lot more de debris starting to flow down the river uh, with these higher levels. So we'll be seeing some of that going on, but it's kind of a quick update of where the river's at at this point. Okay. Any questions? Or? Thank you, Chief. Any questions, anyone? No? Thank you so very much for keeping but, us posted. Thank you. All right, you're welcome. So, Mayor, um, the last update I have is um, a little bit more of an odd update. I just want to make sure Council is, is aware of some of the discussion that is going on in the community related to the City of Alamosa and our interactions with our community partner, La Puente. Um, there's been some different discussions out there that have been brought to my attention that is giving people the impression that the city does not care about our less fortunate, um, our poor, disenfranchised um, community members, that we um, are only interested in our privileged um, community members, um, and just, you know, things that were not trustworthy and, and those types of things. And so I'm having very direct conversations with Lance um, in regards to the language that he is using and the impression that it's getting giving people. But as you live in this community and interact with people, I want to make sure you're not surprised if someone asks you about that. I'm trying to be very clear with Lance that we, we always want to have open dialogue and discussions, and it's definitely okay to have different opinions. And if there's areas they think we can be making improvements, we always want to hear about that. Unfortunately, the language is just being taken beyond that and, and um, 
in my opinion, giving people the wrong impression of, of actually what's going on. And so we're having those conversations, but I wanted to make sure that if, you're, if you run into someone and, and they're saying, hey, um, we hear the city doesn't care about the poor, um, obviously I don't agree with that opinion. I think it's factually untrue. Um, but I wanted you to know that we as staff are aware of it and we're, we're trying to have um, some direct conversations surrounding that, so. Okay, thank you, Heather. Um, Councilor Carson? Uh, I'll wait for Councilor Carson. Okay, all right, thank you. Um, and uh, Holly wanted me to remind you that um, due to the CML conference, we do not have the second meeting in June. So the next regular meeting, um, where you conduct business will be um, in July 3rd, but you do have a work session scheduled for later in the month with the Citizen Street Committee. Um, the other item back on the La Puente item is as we've worked with them for the negotiation of the downtown um, hotel, one of the things that has striked a chord with them is that the food bank is, would be categorized as a type two retail um, and so some of the communication that's out there is, well, the city's putting um, the food bank in the same category as um, a head shop or a pot shop, and that's not what a type two is. And so it, it doesn't give the full picture of what a type two retail is. Um, and, and so just as a clarification, again, in case you get this answer or this question, it's a charitable donation collection center, coin laundries, off-track bedding centers, second-hand stores, thrift shops, consignment stores. Yes, it does have head shops or drug paraphernalia included in there, but you guys are discussing if it should stay in there or not. Tattoo parlors, check cashing stores, payday loans, pawn shops. and the differentiation between the retail one and the retail two is retail two is not allowed in the central business district and within the commercial business it's allowed it just cannot be within 600 feet of another type two and so um it's just i think when we're having these discussions on these types of topics it's so very important the language that we use and that we're giving the full picture and not just a partial picture that that might overly slant the situation councillor uh field <coughs> councillor carson oh heather thank you for clarifying that whenever there is a confusion or the wrong words being used out in the community it could cast doubt and shadows upon council. Um, I know I speak for myself and hopefully for the rest of council, we're very happy that you're clarifying everyone, everything with everyone so that we won't continue to have comments like that circulated throughout the community when the council really has a, a, a lot of heartfelt um, feelings for the people of, from all parts of our city. So thank you for that. Um, next, we have um, local liquor licensing authority action. Consent yes. calendar B. So, go ahead, Councilor. May Leo. I move? <clears throat> may I move that we approve consent calendar B? I'll second that. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Please start voting. Okay. The motion carried four to one with Councillor Broyles casting the no vote. And Councillor Vigil, did you vote or did you mean to not vote? I thought I did. I probably pressed for students instead. Okay, let's do it again. <laughs> I, I vote yes. There we go. Okay. The motion carried five to one with Councillor Broyles casting the no vote. Okay, thank you. And finally, tonight we have uh, council comments. Councillor um, Carson, then Councillor Vigil. Um, just to address what Heather said earlier, um, I'm gonna wrap that up with what, what I wanted to say as far as my comment. Um, thank you, Heather, for addressing that issue. Uh, I did wanna go ahead and thank 
staff and council and uh, everybody else who's been involved in the creation of the, of the Alamosa Ho uh, Homeless Coalition, uh, which is shows the city's effort in what we're doing for the people that um, <clears throat> are less fortunate in our community. And so I, I want to convey that thanks to everybody that was involved, to Councilor Vigil for helping us get that going, and uh, just kind of really appreciate the effort. So thank you again. Thank you, Councilor Carson. Councilor Vigil. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, so Forrest Norberg already left, but I don't know if you all saw that. What Monta Vista did over the last week or two, they approved some legislation again uh, for volunteer watering. Um, I hope that our city does the same thing. I know we had a great year of water, but this might just be one, one great year in the next four or five years of drought. So I hope that our city thinks about uh, doing volunteer water, restric water restrictions like last year, and let's be uh, good stewards of our water. And then a question for you, Heather, would then be, uh, if at our next meeting, could you please give us an update on our beautification projects? Thank you. Okay. Yes, sir. Real quick, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Um, I, I forgot to, <clears throat> to make the announcement that this last week, um, the San Luis Valley got its an official Doppler radar. So we ha we'll have, we have an official, I mean, a real radar up and running. So we'll be putting out more information on that in the future. But it's pretty cool from a water standpoint and from a monitoring, monitoring standpoint. So just wanted to put that out there. Thank okay. you, Thank you Councilor Carson. Councilor Griegel. I just want to uh, thank uh, from the city manager to all the staff. Seems like every time that somebody comes up here, it's such a positive thing, you know, the hard work that each department is doing. And it's just, it's such a positive thing, you know, and I've, I've been here 36 years, you know, and I, I emphasize and I've, I've had an opportunity to work with a lot of different staff and city managers. But this group that we have today is, it's, it's incredible, you know, the way they, every department, the way they come up and it's just so positive. And I hope that the community is aware of that. And, and you know, even your clarifications, you know, our stuff, it's, it's so important. And I hope that our community sees that, you know, of the group of people that are running this community and how hard they work to make it a successful community. And I, it has to be said so. so. Thank you, Councilor yeah. Grego. Councilor Broles. No, I just wanted to say I, I appreciate all the applicants for that homeless coalition. They, they were high quality and very impressed with all of them. Uh, really enjoyed visiting with them and interviewing them. So thank, thank them and thank all those who applied. Okay. And then finally, I would just like to encourage council to participate this weekend uh, in some of the festivities, CRP, wine pouring contest, or not contest, but event and a fundraiser, and then I think we have the Summerfest event uh, coming on uh, this weekend, too. And for those of you who would like to um, um, maybe dunk me in the dunking booth um, at Summerfest, I will be participating in that at uh, 1 p.m., just in case. All right. Mayor, Mayor, Mayor one more thing. Sure, go Sorry, ahead. Sorry, sir. Sure. Um, kind of along your lines, I don't know if many of us know, but the, the Colorado High School Coaches Association, Chaska, they're uh, all-star games are here at Adams State for the third or fourth year in a row. And that's bringing in a ton of people uh, to sleep in our beds and buy our food and that type of stuff. So just a thank you to Adams State because they, they're they always, uh, what do you say, bidding for that and they're always getting it and they do a good job because Chaska keeps coming down here, so. Thank you, Councilor V. Hill, for bringing that up. Okay, that's it, meeting is adjourned. Thank you. <laughs>